Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And we had the retrograde video for Saturn. Now we are back with the next retrograde video of this year, which is none other than the retrogression of Jupiter for 2022. And as I said in my Saturn video, Jupiter and Saturn are very slow moving planets and they are retrograde for very long periods, especially during the entire summer almost. And therefore, it's very uh, important for us to study these transits uh, very diligently because imagine half of the year a planet is retrograde, right? So four, five, six months, it is retrograde sometimes. And uh, therefore, major changes can happen in our life. And we can use astrology to harness these energies and act as per the requirement, as per our Mahadashas and Antadashas. And then we combine transits over it, right? So now I will give some important dates uh, so that we can understand when the prominent events are happening. So this is New Delhi, India uh, time. Uh, Jupiter will go retrograde on 29th of July this year, uh, Friday to 6 a.m. Then uh, Jupiter will go progressive on 24th November 2022 this year all right at 4 31 a.m Thursday so the total motion of retrograde is 119 days so quite some time you see they're almost four months and then we will uh, see the dates for nakshatras okay so we know what nakshatras uh, are always uh, present within a zodiac sign so we see that uh, Jupiter had entered Shatabhisha Nakshatra, which starts uh, in Aquarius, of course, uh, on 2nd of January this year. All right. And then Shatabhisha again ends in Aquarius. And then Purva Bhadrapada uh, was on 2nd of March 2022. And Purva Bhadrapada starts in Aquarius and goes until Pisces. The fourth Pada is in Pisces. So Jupiter had entered Uttar Bhadrapada in uh, on 28th of April, all right? So 2nd Jan, 2nd March, and 28th April. These are the prominent transits. So therefore, now uh, on 20th April, as Jupiter entered Uttar Bhadrapada, it will be there in Uttar Bhadrapada itself, okay? So it is not moving back to Purva Bhadrapada, uh, it is not going to Revati and then again getting retrograde, okay? Uh, so, if I see for next year, 2023, I see Jupiter will enter Revati Nakshatra, which is the last uh, Nakshatra of the sign of Pisces and the entire Kalpurush Kundli on 24th February, 2023. So, essentially, uh, from... Uh, 28th April to, uh, I mean, this year to uh, next year, February 24th, Jupiter will remain in Uttar Bhadrapada Nakshatra, right? And therefore, it's very important to understand uh, what Uttar Bhadrapada Nakshatra is uh, when you are trying to discuss this transit. Because uh, if you remember in the Saturn video, I also told uh, that... You know, Saturn is also undergoing uh, these energies of Aquarius. And uh, then, of course, for Aquarius, we also see Shatvisha and we also see you know, Capricorn. So why I'm saying this? Because uh, unless you understand how the nakshatras are moving in transition, right? So, for example, why does uh, Shatvisha come before Purva Bhadrapada? And why does Uttar Bhadrapada come after uh, Purva Bhadrapada, right? Why, why is Revati not somewhere in between? Why is at the last, right? So you got to understand all this. So therefore, uh, we can study retrogrades uh, very beautifully, provided we know the energies of the nakshatras. Because if we are not aware of the energies of the nakshatras, just studying the zodiac sign won't uh, help us much, okay? So, for example, currently Jupiter is in the sign of Pisces, as you know, and Jupiter is going to be retrograde after some time. Therefore, you got to understand what are the nakshatras that come within Pisces? Why are these nakshatras there in Pisces? 
why is Revathin Pisces? Why is it not in Cancer? Why is it not in Scorpio? Why is it not in Leo, right? So to study that, we got to study the nakshatras and also understand the animals, the symbols, and also the DT associated with that nakshatra. And we should try to correlate with the zodiac sign, right? So the traits of the nakshatra and the traits of the zodiac sign, because the nakshatras are the ones which finally end up making the zodiac sign, right? The zodiac sign does not descend uh, somewhere from the heavens, right? It's like the combination of the nakshatra. So the sign of Pisces is uh, having three nakshatras as uh, usual. So it starts with Purva Bhadra, Purva Bhadra Pada 4. Then the entire Uttara Bhadra Pada is there in Pisces and the en entire Revati is also there in Pisces, right? So therefore, you've got to understand first what is uh, Purva Bhadra Pada because uh, if you do not understand that, then... Uh, it doesn't make much sense to discuss Uttar Bhadarpada, right? So Jupiter moved into Purva Bhadarpada on 2nd of March, right? Uh, and then 28th April, it reached Uttar Bhadarpada. So try to think of the months uh, March and April, what was going on, right? So transits essentially uh, give the results of the dashas, okay? So therefore... Uh, depending on your Mahadasha and your Antardasha, because everybody in this world is going to run this transit. They will have this transit for every, all the billions of people, right? But how will it be unique for you? How will it be unique for your neighbor or for me, for anyone else? That will be decided based on your original horoscope, your birth chart, your Mahadashas and your Antardashas and your Pratyantardashas. Why do I say Pratyantar also? Because you know, if you see, uh, this is a very uh, short transit of two months, right? So from Purva Bhadrapada to Uttar Bhadrapada, entire March and April. So therefore, it's very likely that the Pratyantar Dashas, which are like level three, very precise, they might also uh, change for you. And then this could have given a flavor in a different way, right? For everybody. So therefore, uh, it's important that we uh, look at our horoscope and we look at which Mahadasha, which Antardasha, which Pratyantar we were running uh, from March, uh, beginning of March till the end of April. So Purva Bhadrapada is an akshatra which tells you that you got to handle intensity in life. You got to deal with uncertainties. You got to deal with frustrations in life, right? So have you ever felt that life is demanding a different version from you? And um the problem is you are at the same place right so you feel that okay i'm still here and i'm very happy here why should i do anything right i can just automatically go to the next place right but it tells you no it won't work like that okay so purva bhadarpada tells you that you got to change yourself doesn't matter who you are what you are doing doesn't matter what area it is okay so for checking which area it can be, you have to see uh, which houses does Jupiter rules in your horoscope, right? So if Jupiter rules your uh, Artha houses, right, then there could be some changes related to career. The Artha houses are second, sixth, and tenth, um, for example. And if it is ruling your seventh house or eleventh or second, then um, yeah, I mean the second house and eleventh house are both for career and married life, right? So depending on your dashas, it will be decided. But if it is ruling your seven, then definitely something to do with your married life or relationships, right? Fifth house children, 10th house career, uh, first house is lagna, ninth house, something to do with gurus and counselors. So now uh, it could happen that if Jupiter is your ninth lord, uh, during the months of March and April, your guide guru counselor or father could have given you some advice and you did not pay heed to it and then you faced consequences right now i'm not saying that anybody who has jupiter as ninth lord will face this but depending on your dashas this could be a scenario if uh, your dasha is indicating that you will learn some lesson the hard way right so purva bhadarpada nakshatra tells us that if you don't learn the lessons the easy way i'll teach you the hard way right so therefore uh, purva bhadrapada is that part of us which tells us that okay 
anyways i will only learn when there is no other option right uh, and then we have uttar bhadrapada nakshatra so from the end of april uh, so beginning of may you could consider right uh, that nakshatra is active for jupiter and what is what is uttar bhadrapada nakshatra basically uttar bhadrapada nakshatra tells us that we have had enough of it right now it's the time to change because if if you don't change now it's like now or never as in hindi they say abhi nahi to kabhi nahi <laughs> therefore uttar bhadrapada tells us that we have had these experiences and now it is our duty not to repeat those experiences could be ghastly experiences right so therefore during uttar bhadrapada it is very crucial that especially now it's very important that you sit down and see what happened in the months of march and april right <clears throat> so now because jupiter is going retrograde although it is not going into purva bhadrapada it will be in uttar bhadrapada itself therefore it is essential that we try and see what happened and what are the lessons that we learned right and how to not give into things again because temptations are there everywhere so whichever houses jupiter rules in your chart you could get temptations related to those houses right so therefore it is crucial for us to understand that uh, challenges and difficulties in life will only and only and only help us if we learn the lessons and not repeat the mistakes again right so therefore if you feel uh, that in certain area of your life you have been doing mistakes repeatedly doing the same thing again and again and again then please understand that now is the time that you have to change yourself or rather you will be forced to change yourself which is actually for your good uh, because then uh, you finally experience the power of change and transformation in your life otherwise your life is just the same right but there's a prerequisite for this you you have you might have seen so many people right they have undergone suffering difficulties trials tribulation so many things but uh, you see that there is no change in life right most of the times in fact it is the opposite whenever there are difficulties uh, people succumb to temptations drug al- drugs alcohol like uh, all all sorts of nonsense right why does it happen because difficulties are like darkness right and uh, whenever you see difficulties you get clouded we feel that there is no hope there is no future so that is why we succumb to it right <laughs> now of course we might externally try something and get out of it externally but that's very superficial because if we do not have the power of the guru then what happens is we cannot get out of it at an internal level right so you will see many times you know people they have you know some job loss or they have a breakup or a divorce or some health problem and uh, although they may recover from it temporarily but that kind of permanently damages them inside right at least for 3 to 5 years you will always see uh, people who have had a break in their relationships you know you will very frequently out of uh, all the time almost you will uh, hear them saying things like you know oh yeah, that's it you know i will never find relationship again i'll never find love again there's no use these are all just uh, false uh, hopes you know all uh, if it's a man they'll say oh all women are like this you know they're all women are cheaters if if a woman has had this experience they'll say oh all men are like cheaters you know so so it doesn't work right uh, but why does this happen because uh, as modern day society is uh going ahead or rather going ahead downwards <laughs> going ahead downwards <laughs> uh people have forgotten that there is something called as law of karma which is will of god right so you know the modern civilization has been developed in a very atheistic way right so if, even uh the current day motivational speakers uh and all the so called uh, spiritual gurus most of them not all uh, except a few most of them always keep focusing on things like uh, law of attraction and uh, law of manifestation uh, law of this law of that they know all laws but they ignore the law of karma right because 
the vedic scriptures explain that whatever happens in our life that is because of the law of karma which means we have given some suffering or something good to others and then the same thing is coming back to us right so therefore uh, we have to understand that if we are have getting something good after putting efforts then it does not necessarily mean that we are somebody exceptionally great right it it means that yes we have put our efforts but in the past also we have done something good because of which uh, we have got it very easily otherwise you know even even you can see in india right uh, there is so much uh, focus on these competitive exams right like iit jwe or yeah whatever upsc ias its so it could happen that two two people they study in a very similar way they might have a similar level of intelligence but uh, only one gets through the other doesn't get through right why does it happen does it mean that um, two people who are putting the same amount of effort one is uh, like uh, more intelligent one is more smart yeah could be but not necessarily always it could mean that a person who has got through was also having some share of luck in the sense that he or she had got some questions which uh, is of their interest or which you know the examiner like it 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 is very much possible of course of course this does not uh, deny the fact that they must have worked very hard i'm not saying that they have not worked at all but what you have to understand is uh, the modern day society calls this term luck you know so there is nothing like luck in the vedic scriptures it is simply law of karma right so why does a person take birth in a uh, family of a beggar and why does a person take birth in a family of a billionaire why why does it happen right because of law of karma right so whichever law you follow law of manifestation law of attraction law of x y z do not undermine the law of karma right so law of karma is very important so when you understand law of karma then you understand that whatever happens in my life as lord krishna says in gita brahma bhuta prasanna atmana sochati na kankshati sama sarveshu bhuteshu mad bhaktim labhate pranam that when one is equipoised one is not hankering or lamenting what is hankering 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 is desire to get something in the future which gives you anxiety right lamentation means crying and obsessing over things which we lost right oh i lost that i lost i lost this i lost him i lost her right these are the things that the mind laments for and hankering and lamentation these are the greatest thieves of joy right so krishna says one uh, when one is equipoised and one is not disturbed by the highs and lows then that is the time when spiritual life begins and that is the time when um, the person comes to spirituality right spiritual life begins right and therefore it is important that we understand uh, that whenever our mind is disturbed we have to use uh, the mind itself to bring it back right so that's the peculiarity of the mind my shiksha guru used to say that you have to learn to control the mind with the help of your mind right you can't just Uh, dismiss the mind right if the mind is getting agitated and the mind is making you lose your mind <laughs> you can't just dismiss it by saying oh mind shut up you know just shut up you bloody mind you you just can't do anything just sit down shut up no even if you do that you got to do it with the help of the mind right so therefore uh, the vedic scriptures like the bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam they encourage us to practice mind control uh, especially in the gita krishna says there are two ways by which you can control the mind one is practice the other one is detachment right so try to be detached and try to uh, engage more in spiritual activities then you will realize that uh, everything need not work as per my wish and everything will not work as per my wish right therefore you will really uh, you will be able to take things in the right spirit okay i'm not saying there will be no difficulties difficulties will come as krishna says in the gita dukhala am ashashotam that this material world is a place of misery krishna says right a brahma bhuvana loka punaravarti no arjuna right he says uh, from brahma loka to the last this material world one brahmanda one universe these are all places of misery basically right essentially you got to understand that my connection with god 
my connection with the true self, the soul, which is me, myself, it is beyond all these material objects, right? So if we get material objects, very good. We are not elated beyond a certain extent. And if something is taken away from us, we are still relaxed, we are chilled out because we know that, yes, if something is taken away from us, it doesn't mean that it's like actually taken away from us. It means it was never meant to be for us, right? Only then does material nature take away something which was actually never meant for us, right? So therefore, uh, you will understand that these are valuable lessons which you can gain from suffering. So whenever you get suffering people will give a long speech on you know how suffering transforms you suffering is this suffering is that suffering makes you the new you and all this right that happens provided there is spiritual awakening provided when you get suffering you take shelter of god only then this happens otherwise you take shelter of other things like you know uh, drugs opposite sex food and uh, social media fame right uh, empty within but smiling faces outside right so therefore try to understand that suffering is inevitable right because uh, that's how the material world is designed and everybody who has taken birth has definitely performed some or maybe a lot of sinful activities in the past lifetimes and that is why suffering inevitably comes. It is something which uh, we cannot evade, right? Irrespective of who we are. The type of suffering changes, but the basic law of suffering does not change, okay? So therefore, you have to understand that suffering can be beneficial for us, provided we are in tune with the words of the gurus like Maharishi Vyasdev and the scriptures, right? When we uh, read the scriptures like the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, uh, or the Bible, or the Quran, or the Dharmapada, the Guru Granth Sahib, all the divine texts which uh, are there in any particular religion, when we study them, we'll realize life has much more than what we see, right? So then when you were suffering, then you can be enlightened, and then you can use that suffering to not get entangled again, right? Otherwise, what happens? Have you seen people, they get suffering, then they will start drinking, and they're drinking more, 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 more. And then th there's no change, right? Externally, they may say, oh, I had lost my job and I started drinking. Now I got a new job and my drinking has reduced. But then they've got into that, that habit, right? And they can't stop it anymore now. So therefore, uh, whenever you feel that there is suffering in your life, please take shelter of the divine texts and of your gurus and uh, pray to God. And that is how you will understand that Everything has a purpose and it will be revealed to us in due course of time, provided we are in tune with our original self, as uh, the Vedanta Sutra says, right? Thato Brahma Jigyasa, that now you should inquire about the higher truths, which is the truth about life, death, life after death, spiritual awakening, soul, atma, all these things, right? And that is only possible when we take association of uh, spiritually elevated personalities, uh, especially, you know, during our weekends or, you know, once in a month or maybe every day, every morning, right? So to whatever extent you can, you should take association of spiritually enlightened people so that we can actually understand the purpose of suffering and go beyond it rather than to be just trapped in it all right thank you very much for your patience and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it down below and if you want a consultation from me you can always go to my website down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him